So either you'd like to know more about testing the nerves of the upper limb, or you may have heard of things before like the ulnar claw, or hand of benediction, or Wartenberg sign, and you might be thinking, what do those signs mean and which nerves do they test? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna go through in this video. If that sounds good, let's dive in. Hey guys, I'm Khalid, welcome back to Clinical Physio. So in this video, I'm gonna be taking you through some key signs and tests that you can use if you suspect that your patient has an upper limb nerve injury. So let's go through some of those, starting with the ulnar claw. So the ulnar claw. So this may look a little bit like this in practice, whereby your patient has hyperextension at the metacarpophalangeal joints, and they may have some hyperflexion or some excessive flexion at the interphalangeal joints of the fingers, particularly the fourth and fifth fingers is what we're looking at here. Now, it's important for me to say that this is a resting hand position, the ulnar claw. And as you can imagine from the name, it might indicate an injury to the ulnar nerve. This could be because of a fracture around the elbow. The ulnar nerve runs through a particular tunnel on the medial side of the elbow called the cubital tunnel. So if someone has a cubital tunnel syndrome, then again, these symptoms could present. Or if they have something like a fracture of the hamate bone, which the ulnar nerve runs right along the inside of in its pathway through the hand. So the reason that ulnar claw is a sign of an ulnar nerve problem is because the ulnar nerve is responsible for innervating the lumbrical muscles. And the lumbrical muscles are responsible for flexion at the metacarpophalangeal joints and extension of the interphalangeal joints of the fourth or fifth fingers. So when the ulnar nerve can't do that, you get that ulnar claw sign. So that's what you one sign you might be looking out for when it comes to the ulnar nerve. Now the second sign I want to take you through is the hand of benediction. Now this is commonly confused with the ulnar claw. You can see they're relatively similar. There's an ulnar claw with the hyperextension of the MCPs and there's the hand of benediction. Now the idea with the hand of benediction is that you ask your patient with an extended hand to flex their fingers and then they do this, which means that they can flex the fourth and fifth digits, but they can't flex the second and third. This is a sign of a median nerve problem. And specifically, it's an active test. Whereas the ulnar claw was a resting hand position, the hand of benediction is an active test. Their hands in this position, then we ask them to make a fist. So someone might present with a median nerve problem if they've had a fracture around the wrist or if they have something like carpal tunnel syndrome, which is a compression of the median nerve in the anterior portion of the wrist. Now, the reason that the hand of benediction is an indication of a median nerve problem is because it's all to do with the inability to flex the second and third digits in order to make a fist. Now that's because the flexor digitorum superficialis muscle is innervated by the median nerve and that controls flexion of all the digits. However, when it comes to a second key finger flexor, flexor digitorum profundus, the second and third digits are controlled by the anterior interosseous nerve, a branch of the median nerve, whereas the fourth and fifth digits are controlled by the ulnar nerve. So if someone has a median nerve problem but the ulnar nerve is okay, they might be able to flex the fourth and fifth ones, but they may not be able to flex the second and third ones. And that's why the hand of benediction is specifically a median nerve sign as an active test rather than the ulnar claw, which is a resting hand position. So next, Wartenberg sign, which is also an indication of an ulnar nerve injury. So the idea with Wartenberg sign is we're going to ask our patient to rest their hand flat on the table. The examiner is then going to passively abduct all the fingers so that the hand is in a fan shape. We then ask the patient to bring all their fingers back together to adduct the fingers. But if you find that when they do this, the fifth digit stays in an abducted position, that is an indication of Wartenberg sign, which is positive for an ulnar nerve problem because the ulnar nerve innervates the lumbricals, which should adduct that fifth digit and bring it back in. 
So that's Wartenberg sign. Now other signs you may see with Wartenberg sign or ulnar nerve palsies in general is things like wasting of the hypothena eminence on the medial side of the hand or potentially guttering, which is where you see extensive wasting along the dorsal surface of the hand in between the fingers. So those are some other things to look out for with ulnar nerve palsies in general. So the other sign I would like to show you is Fromont sign, which is used to test the ulnar nerve as well. So for Fromont sign, we need a piece of paper. So the idea with Fromont's is that we ask our patient to keep a pinch or pincer grip of their thumb and second digit. We then slide a piece of paper into that space and we ask the patient to keep the piece of paper in exactly the same place. Now, what this is going to require is adduction of the thumb, adductor pollicis muscle use, which is innervated by the ulnar nerve. And we need that thumb adduction to hold the piece of paper in place like so with that same pinch grip. Now, if your patient has an ulnar nerve problem, one of two things may happen. Either, number one, the piece of paper slips out because they can't hold the position. Or number two, when you try and pull the piece of paper out, they change their pincer grip to this grip, almost an OK sign, because they don't have the thumb adduction strength. So instead, they feel like they need to flex the interphalangeal joint of the thumb, potentially with some distal interphalangeal flexion of the second digit. And both of those would be a positive sign for Fromont's which is an ulnar nerve problem. So the final test to show you is the OK sign, not to be confused with Fromont sign. So listen for the difference between these two. So the OK sign is a test used to look at the integrity of the anterior interosseous nerve, which is a branch of the median nerve. So the anterior interosseous nerve is responsible for flexion of the interphalangeal joint of the thumb and also flexion of the distal interphalangeal joint of the second digit, meaning that the patient should be able to produce a nice OK sign with a round circular shape between the thumb and the index finger. If your patient can't reproduce that, either because they can't get the two surfaces together or perhaps because they, instead of a nice round shape, have more of a pincer grip shape, that might indicate that they can't do an OK sign because they have an issue with the anterior interosseous nerve. So guys, I really hope you've enjoyed this video and that it's helped you make sense of those key tests and how you can test those upper limb nerves in practice. Now we have a really special video coming out for you soon showing you how you can test even more nerves with the very simple screening tool, Rock paper, scissors, okay. And when that video comes out, you'll see it in the top corner here where you can click on it and watch it as many times as you want to learn that really simple screening tool. Otherwise, if you'd like more from Clinical Physio, check out our website, clinicalphysio.com or find us on social media at Clinical Physio. I'm Khalid, thank you so much for watching. See you really soon on Clinical Physio.